All right, Coach, here we go. Your offense made some pretty big strides in the spring. Now with quarterback Brady Walker back for a full third year, what are some of your expectations for the offense this fall? I'm expecting a lot out of offense this upcoming fall. It's so far from the spring season. Um, offensively, they moved up. It was 8.65 points per game. And in the past two seasons since we've been there, it's 12 points per game. Um, Brady obviously has had a lot to do with that on the offensive side of the ball. Um, pass efficiency, pass completion percentage are both first in the conference. Uh, it was second overall in the yards, and it was first on uh, top of first in touchdowns on that end. Coming back, you know, he's got a great receiving core. We're bringing back four players going to be graduates coming back in for us, the receivers. We also had a couple of freshmen that played for us, saw some good playing time. It, it really expect a lot of those guys going forward. Um, so I think for Brady, now it's one of his best offseason. I was pushing him, hey, get a little bit more weight on your body. <laughs> so he got an extra 10 pounds uh, muscle mass just since our season ended. So he's been really pushing himself in the weight room going into the season. Again, you can see the athletic ability he has when plays break down. And, and he brings that dimension to that too as well on the offense and the ball. So we're pretty excited for what we're bringing back on offense. You're not going to open your season until your September 11th matchup with Bluffton. How do you see the later start against a, a new opponent benefiting the Bearcats going into PAC play in week three? I think it really helps us out this year because we're going to bring in some underclassmen that need the extra reps and need that extra time going to camp. Um, it's great that we were able to get a JV game with Hiram the week beforehand so we can actually come in next week and um, bring our guys on campus and be able to get that extra time to work with them. Um, so those guys are going to be pushing and competing. Obviously, we had three offensive linemen um, that are graduating, so we got to make sure we're filling those spots up front. Um, then we also have some other guys on the defensive side of the ball that moved on as well from graduation, so it's getting those guys competing more in practice weekly. With getting those extra reps with the, the extra week of practice, I think it's really going to help us out. You lost several all-conference players, including the school's all-time rushing leader in Mike Stasco after, after your spring season. How are you and your coaching staff looking to fill those position, positions going into the fall? Yes, Mike Stasco is a player It's very special. I mean, honestly, from on the field, off the field. Uh, off the field, 4.0 GPA, went through the criminology program, um, which everybody knows in the state is number one, 23 in the country. And he worked his butt off off the field, and it paid off uh, for him going forward. Going for us on the offense, and now is replacing him. So, our first string running back was Mike Stasco. Our second string was David Marshall. Um, and David Marshall was a second team all conference guy, more as an H back. Um, when he ran the ball, he was very vital in what we were doing, too. Uh, I called him more of a bulldozer type. And his mentality is running guys over whenever he did have the ball. He also blocked very well for Mike Stasco, too, out of the backfield. So we're going to lose that dimension. But I think we're bringing in a, a good group of guys in this class upcoming. Um, I think two players that I have in this upcoming class can fill those spots right away. Um, and then we also have another player that saw some time for us the last game versus Waynesburg, uh, Julian Howard. And he did a great job. He ended up scoring a touchdown in his last game, too, that we had. I think he could build off of that from the running back position. Offensive line play, then, we're, we're going to be losing three all-conference players uh, up front. So that's going to be tough. Colton Belmont being a first-team all-conference, second-team all-regional as a center. But he was very versatile. He could have went from center, guard, or tackle. And then working with him on that end, on the outside, we had Bruce Johnson. It was also a two-time all-conference player we are going to replace on his end. And then working inside with Chris Consul, the three-year starter as a senior. So we're going to have a lot of competition during this upcoming fall training camp. That extra week that we just mm -hmm. talked about, I think, is really going to help out on that end and getting those guys prepared going forward. Coach, the last question I have for you is, how do you feel about having so many of your guys, your program guys, coming back to use their extra year of eligibility? I know as a staff, we're really excited to bring them back. Uh, Cam North, obviously, being right here is one of them. Um, back to back has been leading us in tackles the last two seasons, so we're really excited. Um, I said coming in, he was our number one recruit <laughs> because we were waiting on him to see, was he going to use that extra year eligibility? What did he decide to do? We're very fortunate he's coming back from grad school to really help us out and use this last year eligibility defensively. Um, we're also very fortunate to have four other guys on the offensive side of the ball with all four of our receivers returning too. So those guys coming back 
taking that next step and also talk about with helping Brady walk in the pass mm-hmm. again too can really help and push our guys going forward. Coach, thanks. Cam, a few questions for you. With most of the starters returning on St. Vincent's defense, what do you think you're going to be able to take away from the spring season you had and apply that to the fall? So in the spring season, we had a lot of issues with guys not necessarily being comfortable in the defense because we got the new coaching, like the new defense we were running, things like that. But now that we are more comfortable, I'd say it's definitely going to be nice because everyone's going to be able to carry themselves. You won't have to guide, I mean, as much as you have to, but you don't have to walk everyone through each defense, each coverage, each blitz package, all those things. So it'll be nice with some consistency in that. So I know Coach has men- had mentioned some of the underclassmen that saw action for St. Vincent last spring. What have you done to help these younger players grow and improve the success of your defensive unit? So going back to really just them being comfortable on the field, uh, it took a lot because the defense was new to me too, so I had to work even harder to learn it as best as I could and then help them learn it. So really just a matter of making them feel comfortable even whenever I necessarily wasn't comfortable myself. So Last spring, and Coach mentioned that uh, you led the Bearcats in tackles, recognized as an all-PAC player for your efforts. How are you planning individually to build off a really successful spring? Well, really, now that I'm comfortable in the defense like everyone else is, it's, that's comfortability. Just keep going what I was doing, you know. Just consistency, effort, and all the things that entails being a better cat. So. Good. Coach, Cam, thank you, guys. St. Vincent opens its season on Saturday, September 11th at Bluffton University.